Microsoft Teams now has an improved live streaming functionality. It is the Town Hall, which replaced the existing live events feature. In this video, I will give you an overview of the Town Hall features and the timelines of the retirements based on Microsoft announcement. Let's get started. Let me give you a little bit of background about live events. It was launched in 2019, which allowed up to 10,000 attendees with the base package and up to 20,000 with the premium. Now, attendees can join a virtual live streaming from anywhere in the world on any device, but the live event was built separately from the Teams app. And it has some performance issues and users wanted some of the premium features as well. So, Microsoft will retire this app in September 24. Customers cannot schedule, start, or join any of the team's live events after this date. Microsoft also encourages you to export and save your recordings to a different location. And I will have a separate video for you um, a little later on. Now, they did mention for the government customers, you will have a separate retirement timeline for commercial users with an Office 365 and Microsoft 365 enterprise and academics plans, you have 12 months to transition to the town hall. Now, the town hall will, you will be able to use this feature starting October the 5th. And it was unclear if the government users will have access to the town hall at this time. But Microsoft did say many of the existing live um, event features uh, will be part of the town hall. So I'm looking forward to that. And you will gain some premium features too. So let's review some of those features. Okay, so up first, nothing has changed for attendee capacity. You will still see 10,000 for the base um, package as well as 20,000 for the premium. So that didn't change. For event concurrency, you will have 15 events that you can have running at the same time. And for the premium package, it's 50. For the event duration, now you will have part of town hall, 30 hours, you know, for um, of continuous airtime without it shutting down or restarting. You no, know, I think it's about what, three to four hours the um, way it is today, but that is changing. For ECDN, which is Enterprise Content Delivery Network, it will support third party um, providers and it would include a, a dashboard to monitor real time metrics um, during the events. So you're now gonna be able to track attendee count, peak concurrency, session durations, locations, and a few more. Now the green room. I'm excited to see that this is gonna be coming to the um, team's entire platform. That's meetings, webinars, and the town hall. And so if you don't know what the green room is, it allows the presenters and the organizers to have a separate room so they can meet um, prior to the meeting. Now, they did say that attendees will see a welcoming screen, but I don't know if that's going to be a countdown or, you know, you're going to be able to customize it. In addition, they did say there will be a back channel chat. What that is, again, the organizer and the presenter will have a private space to have a conversation from the audience. Some more features they talked about manage what users see on the screen. If you have used, you know, other streaming platforms, you know, I can choose what when I want the presenter or the content to show and you will have that switchboard in the new town hall as well. High participant list. Now organizers have the option to hide the participant list from the audience. You're not helping them build their um, mail list. They also said that there's a new setting where um, attendees camera and microphone will be turned off automatically when they join. So that's good. Real-time messaging protocol. 
RTMP, inputs and outputs. So here's the techie information. So for improved RTMPs, for the inputs, you can now leverage the external encoders and enables these inputs where organizers and presenters can live stream a custom RTMP source. That's on the techie side, y'all. And for output, in 2024, you will be able to have the ability to live stream to other endpoints like YouTube, LinkedIn, X, which is Twitter, Meta Workplace, and others to come. Again, that's coming in 2024. Okay, so back to end user stuff. So organizers would now have a designated place for Q&A. No more have to go through the chats and look for um, questions outside of people's different conversations. You also can pin a conversation in the town hall and also allow anonymous question posting. Live translated captions. On October the 5th, you will have one language out of six for base packages and one out of 10 for the premium that you will be able to select. Later in 2023, the audience can choose from a selection of six and 10. But right now, whatever you choose, that one language is what's going to be available. And then later in 2023, the audience get to choose from one of the six. Let's talk about on-demand recording. So this is really neat feature that's going to be available in the town hall that once the event ends and you publish the event, it's going to automatically send the link to the attendees. Now, what I wasn't sure of is it going to send it to everybody that was invited or everyone that attended or both. So that was not clear and I'll um, let you know once I know. The addition to that, that once they get the link, that recording will be on a designated landing. Email communications and customization. So with the town hall, you will be able to use any of the pre-configured um, messages that you can send out for invites and with the recordings. That's the Microsoft standard format. This, this was the language that you're going to use. But nevertheless, you don't have to do this manually. Now, with the premium package, you will have the ability to customize those messages. Attendee reporting. So with this, you will, you know, with the town hall, everyone would get the standard event participation um, metrics. You would get activity and overall total and some other metrics. But what's different is with the premium package, you will have the ability to download that data. One of the things that is different with the town hall is you will not see the producer role. What you will see is organizer, co-organizer, and presenter. And they can start and stop the event. They can share their own um, video. It's just like what the producer used to do. Now they can do it as well. Coming at the end of October, the external presenter will be able to bypass the lobby with a presenter's link, right? The attendees will have a separate link from the presenter to reduce confusion. DVR. So when this rolls out on October 5th, attendees will not have the functionality to rewind and pause the event. Now, they did say that that feature is coming, but they didn't say when. Viva Engage integration. The organizers can post it on the Viva Engage and attendees will be able to watch the event from there. So that's good. They didn't say when that's going to be available, so that's coming as well. There you have it. Now you know what I know. So if you have any questions about the town hall feature or the retirement of live events, Put it in the comments and I will um, address them as they come in. Now, go work your magic.